ghost is a fire Holy flame burning wild Burning through the night Burning with the light Of a billion stars His love is like lightning Cracking through the sky Burning through the rain Burning through the pain of a billion scars. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. All the stories are true. Ghost is inside me. A holy fire burning wildly. Burning through the things that need to be erased to liberate my soul. Get ready. There's an empty tomb. Get ready. There's a ghost in the room. Stories are true. He'll heal you. He'll heal you. He'll heal you. He'll. Heal you. He'll to fall we're ready for your voice to call we're ready for your lightning come we're ready into your arms we run we're ready let the heavens part we're ready for the So come on, come on, come on. We're ready, we're ready, we're ready. We're ready. We're You are true, you are true, 
even in my wandering. You are joy, you are joy, you're the reason that I sing. You are life, you are life, in you death has lost its sting. And oh, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms, the riches of your love will always be enough, nothing compares to your embrace, light of the kids if you enjoyed watching our video last time we're coming again tomorrow night with another service so you should really watch plus there's a special surprise in one of the videos so make sure to tune in bye bye welcome to our wednesday evening service again we're so grateful that you have taken a few moments to join us and i'd also like to uh, share with you not only are we on facebook but we are also on YouTube. All you gotta do is pull up YouTube, type in Brookport Church of God, and you will find us there, and you can uh, tap on the service and uh, watch us there. When you go to YouTube and, and you get our page, please subscribe, that does help us, and we appreciate it so very, very much. Uh, again, I wanna thank you for your faithfulness and giving to the work of the Lord. You've been so, so faithful in all of this and we appreciate it so much and i just want to encourage you to continue uh, to be faithful this has uh, lasted a little longer than many thought it would but uh, again we appreciate you all so very very much and your dedication to the kingdom of god I i'm ready to get into the word this evening and uh, i want you to go ahead and take your bible or uh, pull it up on your device psalm 27. We're going to be looking at the, the thought tonight, confidence to conquer our fears. Now, I got to thinking about that word fear or fears, and, and it took me back a number of years, and I'll be honest with you, it's more years than I'd realized, but back in the late 1889, early 1990s, uh, there was a, uh, a slogan or a motto that became uh, famous by becoming a phrase on T-shirts. Two-word slogan, simply, no fear. 
Now, these shirts are still available today. You can order them online. Uh, and I just found that fascinating that, that it was back in, in the late 80s, early 90s when this really seemed to get traction. And, and what it did is it, it became a representation of a way of life that says, I won't fear anything in life. Now that sounds good when you say it, no fear. Uh, it looks good on a t-shirt, no fear. But really, I mean, no fear? At first glance, we have a tendency to question you the validity of such a statement as becoming a way of life. Now I, wa I believe what will help clarify that is this. I don't believe the inference of this motto on a t-shirt that they ever uh, meant it to be, uh, to never have or experience or cause a fear. What I believe the inference is that I will never become a casualty to my fear. See, we all experience those, those, those uh, times. Maybe it's a, uh, a doctor. Uh, sitting across from you telling you something you dreaded to hear or or you get a notice in the bank from uh, or in the mail from your bank and uh, reminding you you're insufficient in your funds or maybe your boss calls you in and you dread the words that he may say, he or she may say to you we have those moments that that fear can become real in our lives. But again, we don't have to become a casualty to our fear. See, we need to adopt this mindset. My fear will not stop me from getting back up and trying again. We have those moments, but that's all they have to be is a moment. Because greater is he that is in us, and he that's in this world, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. If we are born of God, we are overcomers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if you remember back uh, many years ago, the wide world of sports. Jim McKay was the sports host. And uh, they would begin each segment of Wide World of Sports with a video clip and the words, the uh, uh, thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Well, Vico Bogota, he was a competitive ski jumper from Yugoslavia, now known as Slovenia, back in March 7th, 1970, became the unintentional face whenever they would say the words, the agony of defeat, they would show the video clip of him going down the ski jump, getting off balance, and crashing. And he injured him an ankle, broke an ankle, and suffered a mild concussion or a, I believe it was really a, a broken ankle that he that he uh, experienced now what's forgotten or overlooked is the that earlier that day uh, Bogota had successfully completed a 410 foot jump but the image that has been replayed again and again and again the agony of defeat is his crash. And I just believe that that one day in Bogota's life illustrates how quickly life can go from the thrill of victory to the agony of defeat. You see, uh, these events and occurrences have a tendency to leave the residue of fear in our lives and if that residue is left untreated or unchallenged, it can grow like an, an infection and begin to affect the whole of our lives and we become a casualty to our fears. Now, in Psalm 27, 
David describes a fearless attitude. Again, it's not that he never experienced anything that would have caused fear. He had multiple things in his life, occurrences in his life, that, that would strike fear in all of us. But somehow through it all, David had determined, I'm not going to be a casualty, a captive to my fears. This passage reveals that ultimately he has no reason for fear to dominate his life. And we can learn from that. And basically, basically, it's because God is his light and his salvation, his stronghold. He will not allow fear to control his life. When bad seem to surround him, his mind will not be controlled by fear. He reveals a confidence that will not allow him to become dominated by fearful events in his life. In other words, he finds sufficient resources by being in the presence of God. In the same way, if we have confidence in God that, that he is our light, our salvation, our stronghold, we don't have to be a casualty of our fears. We don't have to be controlled by our fears, we don't have to be dominated by our fears. Amen. You see, there may be unimple uh, unpleasant experiences and unwanted news and unexpected hardships. And they visit all of us. They come to all of us. And they strike at least a momentary fear in us. However, because of our salvation experience, we don't have to become prisoners to our fears. Now, if we're going to live the life that Jesus intended, we need to develop that confidence, a God-centered confidence, a God-anchored confidence. This confidence enables us to trust God so that we don't have to live dominated by our fears. This psalm shares with us ways in which we can trust God and have confidence in him to help us to overcome those fears, to conquer those fears. See, I can have confidence in God over my fears because of the salvation I have through Him. Now, there are four characteristics of, sal of my salvation in this verse that, that show me that I can have confidence over my fears. Four ways that, 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 that gives me confidence over fear. The first we find in, in these first two verses, Psalm 27, 1 and 2, said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? In other words, because God's my light, God's my salvation, who is there out there that I need to fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom? Should I be afraid? When evildoers came against me to devour my flesh, my foes and my enemies stumbled and fell. See, from these two verses, we see that David has a personal relationship and past experiences with God. Hallelujah. He's got a connection with God and he's got a history with God. Everything going on in David's life is screaming that he's in trouble and that he should be a casualty or a captive to his fear. And as we continue to read through the rest of this psalm, he tells us uh, of his enemies. He tells us of his uh, difficulties. However, in these first two verses, David is expressing his uh, faith passionately. The words he is declaring in these two verses are not a reflection of his feelings. His feelings would be telling him the opposite of what he's expressing. His, his faith is motivating the words and the attitude from his life. Hallelujah. He said, I've got to express my faith. Yeah, I've got all this stuff going on right now. 
but I've got a God that's working for me. If all of life, all of this world, if all adversaries are coming against me, if God is for me, I'm going to be able to stand through it all. Uh, and he's saying, I need to say it. I need to speak it. I need to write it down. By expressing your faith during the time of trouble, you take the first step toward healing and wholeness. And he goes on in verse 3, and I'm using the Holman Christian Standard Bible. He says, though an army deploys against me, look at this, my heart is not afraid. I may be outnumbered, but as long as God is with me, I will not be afraid. Look, though a war breaks out against me, still I am confident. Hallelujah. I want you to notice this. David moved from an expression of his faith he could have been expressing his feelings, which would have been a, on the other end of this spectrum, but he's expressing out of his faith. Now we're seeing an extension of his faith. He says, look, though an army, it's almost as though it's, it's future tense now. Though an army deploys against me, my heart is not afraid. Though a war breaks out against me, still I am confident. He's moved from his expression of faith to the extension of his faith. See, God is not only good for me today. God is good for my tomorrows. Hallelujah. I once read a, a, a secular management book that suggested writing a uh, catastrophe report. In, in, in the midst of your trouble, sit down on a legal pad and... Uh, begin to imagine the worst result you could have from the trouble you're experiencing. Write it in detail. When you read it aloud, you begin to realize this problem probably won't get that bad and you start feeling better. I, I, there's something to that. Listen, sometimes we spend so much time talking about what's wrong in our lives we, we replay the worst images in our mind, and then we begin to play out the worst-case scenarios. Our minds can go to some pretty dark places, and, and we begin to imagine things that most likely will never hap happen. And, and we don't take enough time to express our faith and, and say, Lord... Even if this situation, this bad situation gets worse, you're still there for me. And I have this confidence. You are the God of the extremes in my life. Praise the Lord. You are the God of the extremes in my life. See, we, we need to have an expression of our faith. And we need to have an, an extension of our faith. And then there needs to be this, this experience that we reveal. I said in Psalm 27, verses 4 through 5, he said, I've asked one thing from the Lord. It is what I desire, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, gazing on the beauty of the Lord, seeking Him in His temple, for He will conceal me. I love that. He will conceal me in His shelter in... The day of adversity. I, I've got this, th this adverse situation I'm walking through, but yet in the midst of that, I'm concealed in the presence of God. It goes on and it says, He will hide me under the cover of His tent. He will set me high on a rock. Isn't that wonderful? To me, there, there's such uh, value. In that passage of scripture, he has now whittled his life down to one thing. He says, one thing I have desired of the Lord, and that's what I'm going to seek after. When problems come to many people, the first thing they so often do is quit the church. They quit coming to church, they quit being a part of it. And the thing of it is, if they just keep coming, 
that's where they would find comfort. Now, we may not be able to assemble like we normally would, but we're still able to connect as, as a body of believers. And it is in this coming together, the, this digital way, this virtual way of coming together, that we are still connecting and there's just something takes place when the body of Christ comes together and begins to worship God together. It can take place in no other way than, than whenever we are brothers and sisters connected in a worship opportunity. We just encourage one another. We feed off of that. Amen. See, if we allow trouble to come between us and God, it's going to move us away from Him. But if we refuse to allow trouble to separate us, it will stay on the outside and, and be a force that will push us even closer to God. See, it all depends on where you let the trouble come into your life. And then I want you to understand today, enjoy your faith. Enjoy your faith. Psalm 27, verse 6, he says, Then my head will be high above my enemies. Remember, you're going to set me up on that rock. That's what he said in the previous verse. You're going to stand me up on that rock. Then my head will be high above my enemies around me. I will offer sacrifices in his tent, listen, with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Listen, not only do we need uh, to experience our faith, we need to enjoy our faith. Praise is not just worship. I'm telling you, praise is also warfare. When we feel uh, least like worshiping God, that's when we need to worship Him the most. Worship makes God big in your heart, in your life. Worship magnifies God. It puts an awareness of God, of who God is in your heart. So you begin to sense and appreciate the greatness of Almighty God. Somebody right now just needs to begin to praise God. Your problems have been magnified. Your, your problems are, are overshadowing you. Your problems ha have seemingly shut you off and shut you down. But I'm here to tell you, if you just right now begin to enjoy your faith and begin to praise and worship God, you will recall to mind, He is God Almighty, and the perspective of your life will change, and instead of looking down, you begin to look up and know the joy of the Lord is your strength. Somebody give the Lord a praise right now. Wherever you're at, begin to praise and worship God. You see, when you measure your trouble against others, we oftentimes get depressed. But when I measure my trouble against the greatness and the magnificence of God, I understand I am more than a conqueror. No wonder our heads get lifted up. Isn't that an amazing feeling? You're so weak and tired. Your head begins to droop and fall down. Then all of a sudden you begin to praise God. You're made aware of the presence of God. And it's almost as though you feel the invisible hand of God reaching and beginning to lift your head up supernaturally. Oh, hallelujah. David tells us here that he is the lifter of our head. Hallelujah. 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 I, I just got a few more moments with you, and I just want to share with you, and I want to remind you, when you praise God, it builds your confidence in God. When you pray to God, it builds your confidence in God. See, true prayer responds to God's call. In Psalm 27, verses 7 through 8, he said, Lord, hear my voice when I call. Be gracious to me and answer me my heart says this is about you you are to seek my face lord i will seek your face hallelujah that's what it is in the midst of trouble he heard god say seek my face david and david obeyed in every difficult situation there's always a time in the midst when the voice of god speaks to us and says it's time 
It's time. Seek my face. When it happens, you respond. True prayer in time of trouble is really a response to God. True prayer relies on God's provision. Don't hide your face from me. He said in verse 9, Do not turn your servant away in anger. You've been my helper. Do not leave me or abandon me, God of my salvation. If my father and my mother abandon me, the Lord cares for me. Hallelujah. He's saying even if his mom and dad kicked him out, disowned him, God's never going to do that. Hallelujah. God is our heavenly Father. True prayer resigns to God's will. Listen to verse 11, 12, and 13. Because of my adversaries, show me your way, Lord. Lead me on a level path. Do not give me over to the will of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing violence. I am certain that I will see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Here is a humble submission to God's will. See, sometimes we don't see God's will because we're not looking for it. Uh, you know, and I, I really believe this, keep a prayer journal. This journal will help you on your journey with God. When you keep a little prayer journal in which you write uh, things God does uh, for you, when you get in trouble and your, your faith uh, gets weak, and it does at times, uh, open up your journal and read, and you'll see firsthand what God has done for you. That's a great source of encouragement and true prayer will cause us to remain calm when God delays. Verse 14, wait for the Lord. Be strong and courageous. Wait for the Lord. Listen, God's not on our time uh, schedule. We need to remain calm when God delays. Wait. Trust God. Amen. Christians are able to make disciples because that command is sandwiched uh, between the authority of Jesus. We can pray and see God work in our lives, but in between we need to learn to wait for Him. See, when trouble comes, there needs to be an expression, an extension, an experience, and an enjoyment of our faith and when you pray in times of trouble response to God rely on God resign your will to God and remain calm his help is on the way see all of these principles are are available to to you just like they were to David you can write down your own psalm and God will hear you uh, with the voice of confidence, it sounds like a sense of boldness in prayer. I want you to listen to this. I'm going to close with this. Ruth Bale Graham vividly remembers September, or vividly remembered September 2nd, 1933. She wrote this down, shared this story. She was 13. Her father was a missionary surgeon in uh, China. Her mother was sending her to a boarding school in what is now uh, Pongyang, North Korea. For Ruth, it was a brutal parting, and she earnestly prayed she would die before the morning. But dawn came, leaving her prayers unanswered. She gripped her bags and trudged toward the riverfront. She was leaving all that was loved and familiar. Her Chinese friends, her missionaries that had been with her, her parents, her home, her memories. And the boat carried her slowly down the river into another river and eventually to East China Sea. A week later, she was settling into this sparsely decorated dormitory. 
Waves of homesickness pounded her, literally like a churning surf. Ruth kept busy by day, but evenings were harder. They were challenging. She would bury her head in her pillow and cry herself to sleep. Night after night, week after week, she fell ill. And in the infirmary, she read through the Psalms, finding comfort in Psalm 27, 10. When my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take care of me. The hurt and fear and doubt persisted. Finally, in desperation, she went to her sister Rosa, also enrolled in the same school. I don't know what to tell you, Rosa replied matter-of-factly, unless you take some verse and put your name in it and see if that helps. Ruth picked up her Bible, turned to a favorite chapter in Isaiah 53, and put her name in it. But he was wounded for Ruth's transgressions. By his stripe, Ruth is healed. All of a sudden, faith began to, to rise, and her heart seemed to leap within. And she said, it was as though a, an emotional healing began to take place. Just such an awareness, an overwhelming awareness of God's presence with me. And I began to understand, I'm going to be all right. God's with me. God's got me covered. God's going to take care of me. God's not going to leave me nor forsake me. I'm going to be okay. And I just want to leave that with someone. And maybe it's Isaiah uh, 53. Maybe it's Psalm 27. Maybe it's Psalm 23. Whatever it is, find a verse. Put your name in it and begin to make that your personal verse. I'm telling you, it will begin to make a difference in your life. There is ability today to overcome our fears. We experience fears, but we don't have to become casualties and captives to our fears. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray again today, this word has been an encouragement to someone listening. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you as we close out this service today. And before we do, I want to thank you again for joining us and being a part of this service. Uh, continue to reach out to one another. Uh, bring words of encouragement to one another. Pray for one another. Uh, we continue to see uh, the body of Christ strengthened even in this season of adversity. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. We worship you today, God. Heavenly Father, again, I, I thank you for each and every person that has tuned in and is watching this this evening. I pray, oh God, that something in this message has just spoken to their hearts, their minds, their souls, oh God, and has encouraged them, uplifted them, helped them in some way, God. I, I pray that in Jesus' name. I, I pray, God, that if there's anybody out there that has listened to this and uh, desires to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, uh, let them, God, open their hearts and lives. Let them surrender to you. Let them ask you to come into their heart, uh, ask, the, ask you to forgive them of their sin, and you will forgive them of their sin, and they'll become your child, God, in Jesus' name. Again, Lord, thank you. Thank you for being our light, our salvation, our stronghold, even during this season in our lives. Let your will be done through this word, in Jesus' name, amen. Hey y'all, thanks for watching today. Y'all can always give at brookportcog.com or you can send in your gift to the address below.